Well, good day, boys and girls. I, I'm here to teach you about birch bark biting. And the birch bark biting that I'm going to show you today is all about math. But before that, I want to teach you a little bit about birch bark. And birch bark uh, has a legend and how the birch bark got its stripes. But birch bark was very important for First Nation people too because it has a lot of medicine in it. Uh, they can make birch bark syrup that you could use on your pancakes, or on bread, or on your sandwiches, that kind of thing. So it was the nat natural sugar. So it didn't bother uh, anybody with diabetes. It doesn't bother anyone because it's a natural sugar. And birch bark can be used as a tea as well. Birch bark was harvested and made for First Nation people. Traditionally, we made baskets, we made canoes, and uh, beautiful baskets like this. And there's no staples, there's no nails, uh, there's no paper clips, no tape, no glue. Uh, they use sinew to create birch bark baskets and uh, grass threads as well. So these baskets were used for storage. I can pass them around so you can pass them around the classroom. And you can look at them. And there's different sh shapes and sizes of the birch bark baskets. And they often would decorate them with porcupine quills and shells, anything that came from Mother Earth. Uh, they would use willow. And this one has ties made from leather. So a beautiful uh, little birch bark basket there. You pass those around as well. This little lid comes off for a little bit of storage. So, and it's very hard to find birch bark artists today. So it's really wonderful that we have some artists still continuing to make birch bark baskets as well. An artist that we have here, her name is Angelina Veracity. And she was one of the last birch bark biting artists here in Saskatchewan. And I had the opportunity to learn from her how to birch bark bite. And it was in the days when I went to university, when we didn't have uh, Xerox machines. We had carbon paper. And uh, that's how I'm going to show you how to birch bark bite is imitation birch bark biting with uh, carbon paper and plain paper. And then today, we're going to learn a little bit about angles as well. This is carbon paper. And carbon paper, we can buy it at Staples, any kind of um, place where they sell office supplies. And carbon paper has an ink background, so you really don't want to get this on your clothes and on your hands too much, because uh, it inks it up. And if you put it on your clothes, it won't wash out too well, so your mom won't be happy with that. So we start with um, a blank piece of paper, and then we fold it over. And then we have our lines of um, angles. The first one we fold over is our first straight line. And when we pinch it over, we, we do it gently because if we pull our fingers, it'll make a straight, dark line in there. So we have to just pinch it down lightly. And then we fold another straight line. So we have a quarter of the paper inside. And then we fold it to another angle. And we call that angle versus the right angle. And then we have a complementary angle. So we fold from the line to the line. So when we're biting, Make sure our mouth is clean of spit. You don't want the spit to go on the paper. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make a flower. So in order to make a flower, you kind of have to put the image in your head. To make a circle, you make kind of like a cone shape at the tip here. And when we birch bark bite, we bite with our teeth. We don't use any other instruments than the teeth we have. And some people do better than others because they have better teeth than, than most people. And what happened to Angelina Morassi as she got older, uh, she had bad dentures and they had to replace her teeth with dental plates, so she had artificial teeth. And when she tried biting, she couldn't bite anymore because her teeth would bounce and they put more marks on the, on the biting than she had anticipated. So she couldn't do any more birch bark biting, so she lost her trade. So she said, you know, when you teach kids about birch bark biting, make sure that they learn about how to take care of the teeth really well. Good dental hygiene so they, their teeth last forever. It's very important. So I'm going to start with the, the opening of the, what's that middle part of the flower called anyway? Anybody know? Mm hmm There's my little bites. Now I'm going to make a petal of the flower. So I just kind of make half the petal. So when you open it up, it becomes a whole petal. So I use my fingers to point where, or kind of guide me of where I've left off. And then I bite this way. Now, flowers need a leaf, like a petal. So I will have a, a leaf. And 
this spring, so little fly things love going to flowers. So I'm going to make um, a little fly, a flyer, a bee or a fly. There's the back part, I'm going to make a head. Put an antenna on the head. I'm going to make a wing. So again, there's that right angle, and there's that complementary angle line here. We're going to open it up. And then when we open up, we have lines of symmetry. We call them lines of symmetry. And you can see what comes out of it. See the bee and the flowers? So that's what we're going to try doing. The outcome of our birch bark bite, you can see the lines of symmetry. You have the lines crossing the middle and the, the angle lines too. So we should have an uh, image like this and we have another image that a student had created in the classroom as well. So we have our line of symmetry. So now we're going to redo our bitings and this time we're going to do a right angle biting picture. So we're going to show everybody what a right angle should look like.